How y'all doing, good people? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I hope you are having a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful weekend. I want you guys to do me a big favor. Hit that thumbs up button as soon as you come in to the chat, as soon as you come into the live, as soon as you come into the video, please hit that thumbs up button for me. It's really, really important that you guys hit that thumbs up button for me. Please, please, please hit the thumbs up, hit the thumbs up. Really, really important because that's the only way we can get YouTube to share and spread this video to more people so we can grow our community and start helping more people get to their financial freedom. So please do that favor for me. Hit that thumbs up, hit that thumbs up immediately as soon as you come into the live, as soon as you come into the video. Second thing I want you to do for me is consider getting up 12 free stocks from Weeble. Weeble's gonna give you 12 free stocks when you open a new Weeble brokerage account, put any amount of money in that brokerage account, they're gonna give you up to 12 free stocks for just trying out the brokerage app. There's a link down in the description box of this video. Click on that Weeble link, open up your new Weeble account today, go get that free stock, go get that free money. I'm gonna also send you a Weeble tutorial video to walk you through how to use the Weeble app to make your first trade. All you gotta do is send me a DM on Instagram at richardfain28. Let me know you've opened up that Weeble account. Let me know you've funded the Weeble account. And then I'm gonna send you that Weeble tutorial video to walk you through how to use the app so that you can start building your wealth today. The truth about passive income and how to get it. That's what we're going to be talking about today. I get a lot of emails. I get a lot of DMs on Instagram. And I also see a lot of comments down in the YouTube videos. When I talk about passive income, people are asking me, well, hey, man, how do I get passive income? And I want to walk you through my thoughts on that today because we, we have a lot of information out there in the social media world from a lot of different people talking about passive income. And let's face it, a lot of these people have not created passive income, right? What they do is, is they talk about passive income, but in actuality, they're not even receiving passive income. So I wanna clear up a few things on that. The two ways I believe you can make income, here they go. First way is active income. Active income is simply where you trade time for money. I go to work for an employer, I give them eight hours, I give them 10 hours, I give them 12 hours, and they pay me a wage in exchange for that time that the, I'm giving their company. They give me a wage in exchange for me creating some product or service for them that they then go out and sell and generate revenue for their company. And out of that revenue, they pay me as an employee. I can also trade time for money in my own business, right? If I have a business that I'm actively participating in, the only way that business operates and runs and generates income or revenue is because I give my time to that business and then that business generates that revenue. And then out of that revenue, I can pay myself and I can also pay anybody that works for me. But the only way I generate that income is I gotta exchange time for money. So one way of creating income is through your active participation, right? You're, you're participating actively in generating this revenue either for an employee or for yourself. Now the second way 
you can create income is passive income. And passive income, in my definition, is where I don't have to do anything, right? My assets generate income or work that I've done in the past is still generating income for me. For example, let's say that, um, you know, I'm an artist and I've done a lot of work in the artist industry and I've created a portfolio of, of artwork that is hanging somewhere in, in museums around the world. Now, I still own the art, but the museums hang the art, use the art, and then they pay me a royalty because of that. See, that's work that I did in the past, but I still make income from it now, presently. That's passive income. Let's say um, I write music, right? And I've written some really good music for some musical artists out there, right? And every time that artist song is played, and if I wrote the lyrics for that song, I, I get royalties I don't, it, it, in perpetuity, right? It could be work I did 10, 15, 20 years ago, but if that music is playing, if it's streaming, if people are playing it, I get a royalty for that, right? Let's say I, I served in the military. I did 20 years in the military, serving my country. Now I'm retired but I still get a pension from the military for that service I did 20 years ago. So there is a way to, 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 to create passive income without actually building physical assets. But the way most people create passive income is through assets. Assets like paper assets through the stock market, building a stock market portfolio of ETFs, individual stocks, index funds, mutual funds, bonds, that type of thing. So that's one way. The other way is through real estate for income. People go out and they buy real estate. They put tenants in that real estate. That real estate generates what? Income through what? The, 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 the rental income that the tenant pays, right? So that's a way. And then there's a way to do it also through a business whereby, hey, I invested in a business. I'm not actively uh, participating in the day-to-day -day operations of that business, but I gave that business a bunch of money. And now I get a, I get a dividend or I get, or I get um, distributions when that business does well. So there are ways you can create passive income from just your traditional big three investments, right? And that's what I'm going to talk about today because there's a myth out there that, hey, I want to put thousand dollars in something and I want to start getting passive income I got an email uh, yesterday from 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 an individual who said hey I'm 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 in school I'm, I'm full-time student but I got a little bit of money I want to I want to invest and I want to in a couple of months I want to start getting passive income from that money and and I think that's one of the misconceptions from a lot of people is that you know passive income just you know, you don't have to have a lot of money in order to create passive income. And guys, that, you know, that's, that's not true. In most cases, yeah, you're going to have to build assets to a point where they're big enough that they create and generate enough passive in income to take care of you. $1,000 is not going to get it. Yeah, you may create some passive income, but it's going to be pennies. It's going to be pennies. You really, if you're going to use the stock market, let's, let's use that as our first example. If I want to use the stock market to create passive income, I want to invest my money into stocks, ETFs, index funds, and then create passive income from those investments. Guys, I got I to gotta build a pretty good size uh, portfolio of investments through the stock market in order to, to, to create any type of significant um, passive income. Right. If I want to create five thousand dollars a month in passive income using my investments from the stock market, then I need to have at least a million dollars in my investment portfolio. The rule of 200 says I take 
whatever amount of passive income that I'm trying to generate, and in my, in my example, it's $5,000. So the rule of 200 says I take that $5,000 and I times it by 200, which is a million bucks. Then I take that million bucks and I look for a, at least a conservative 6% rate of return, right? So I take my million bucks, which is my stock market portfolio. I times that by 6% rate of return. That will pay me 120,000. That will pay me $60,000 a year. I divide that $60,000 a year by 12 and there's my $5,000 a month. So I got to actually create a, 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 a portfolio of investments of, of over a million dollars to realistically be able to create $5,000 a month in passive income. So it's not that easy as most people think it is, right? But, but that's the picture a lot of us get painted when we go out on social media. That's, that's the picture we see, right? Is that it's, it's quick, it's easy. You can do it in a matter of months. I'm not saying you can't do it in a matter of months, but you're gonna have to have a lot of money in order to do it in a matter of months, right? Now, someone that comes in and says, hey, I already got a million dollars and I wanna create passive income. Of course, it's easy for that person to, to generate 5,000 a month because they already got a million dollars. But if you're coming in with no money, with no net worth, with no assets, and you wanna generate $5,000 a month in passive income, hey, it, you, you got a lot of work to do, right? You, you got a lot of work to do. Let's take real estate, because a lot of people think, okay, I'll get into real estate and I'm gonna I'm create this, this, um, this, this passive income from real estate. I'm gonna get into real estate with no money, no experience, right? Bad credit, but yet and still, there's a way for me to, to generate passive income in real estate. Guys, that, that's not true. That's not true. Real estate's no different than any other asset that you have to build up in order to get it large enough, get the asset large enough to generate passive income. Let's use that same example I use with the stock market portfolio. Let's say you wanted $5,000 a month in passive income from, from real estate. You know, how, how, how big does the asset need to be? Well, in my opinion, in order to get a, a $5,000 net cash flow, Again, you're going to need at least a million dollars worth of real estate. And you're going to have to get at least a 6% rate of return on that million dollar piece of real estate to get a net $5,000 a month, right? And, 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 and passive income. So, so real estate, you do have to buy the real estate it has to be valued high enough. The rental income has to be high enough, right? Above and beyond what your expenses are. Because the way real estate works is, yeah, you get the rent, but you still got to pay expenses on the property. Even if you own the property free and clear and you don't have a mortgage on it, you're going to still have ex expenses. You're going to still have property taxes, property insurance, repair and maintenance and maybe HOA fees and things like that, depending upon where the property is. So, so even though someone's paying you $2,000 a month in rent, you know, you still are not gonna get that full 2,000 in your pocket, not in most situations, because you're still gonna have to minus out the, the expenses from that $2,000 rent check. Now, the only way I know that people have gotten away with not having to pay expenses when they buy real estate is when you go buy what they call triple net or absolute net properties. But those are big gigantic properties that you, you lease to credit tenants. Big Fortune 500 companies rent these, these, these properties or these buildings from individuals like you and I, and they are responsible for paying the property taxes, the insurance, and general repair and maintenance and you just get a, a check each month, you get an ACH each month, and you don't have to do anything. But that's what they call a triple net or absolute net arrangement with a credit tenant. Somebody like a Walgreens or a CVS or a Best Buy or a Home Depot. A lot of these big companies don't like to have a lot of real estate that they own on their balance sheet. They like to have, they like to just lease real estate. Someone else on it, 
own it and we'll just lease it from you. We'll lease it for 10 years, 15 years, 20 year lease, right? But they don't have to worry about building a building or doing any of that. Someone like you and I will build a building to their specifications. They will sign a lease with us for 20 years, triple net, absolute net lease, which means whoever the tenant is, is responsible for the taxes, the insurance and general repair and maintenance. All I do is, is get a check. See, that is pure passive income when you're talking about real estate. But if, you, but if you're actually paying the property taxes, paying the insurance, you know, paying the repair and, the, the, the repair and maintenance, then you typically, typically have to get a higher rental rate in order to justify paying all of that stuff, right? So my point is you can get passive income through real estate. I did it for a lot of years, but it's not 100% absolute passive because you got to have a little bit of interaction with the tenant from time to time, unless again, you go hire a property management company and they will have all the interaction with the tenant. My, my point is in order to get enough money to take care of you, right? you got to have quite a good portfolio of real estate, normally north of a million dollars if you want to generate $5,000 a month in income from that rental property. And you can't have a mortgage on it. you got to own it free and clear. Because if you have a mortgage, that's going to require you pay a mortgage to the bank. You're going to have to have a loan with the bank. you got to pay them interest. So, again, a million dollar real estate, real estate property with no mortgage, typically, typically, if your rental rate is correct, you, you, you can make good passive income depending upon your lifestyle to, to help take care of you, right? For some folks, $5,000 is not going to be enough. For some folks, it's too much. So you got to figure out for you exactly what type of passive income you need to make in order to, to satisfy your, 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 your lifestyle needs. And that's going to be different for everybody. I know when I was 30 years old, I said to myself, hey man, if I can get $10,000 a month in passive income, that's more than enough to pay for my lifestyle because I don't have some jet setting lifestyle. I said, hey, at least minimum of 10,000 a month. Now, what do I need to do over the next 15 to 20 years to put myself in position to be able to get that $10,000 a month in passive income? Uh, back to that rule of 200. I said, okay. 10,000 times 200 is $2 million. So I knew right in my mind that I needed to build my net worth to $2 million in order to have a chance to generate $10,000 a month in passive income. So, so over a 15 to 20 year period, that's what I set out to do. I set out to earn money from my active income and then take that money from my active income and instead of buying things to make other people wealthy, I would take that income and I would invest it in things like paper assets in the stock market. I would invest it into real estate for income, right? And, 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 and when I felt like my, my primary income wasn't enough and it wasn't generating enough free cash flow to be able to invest in these things, I created side hustles. I worked a full-time job, primary job, and then on my off time, I developed side hustles that created more money for me. And that's the way, guys, I got to the number I needed to get to in order to generate my $10,000 a month in passive income. It didn't happen overnight. It, there was no, oh, uh, I don't have any money, but, you know, I really would like $20,000 a month in passive income. Richard, can you help me figure out how to do that? First thing I'm going to ask you is, is, what type of income do you have? Oh, I don't have any income. Well, then you're not realistic. You're not going to create any passive income if you ain't got no income. You got to have income. And then you got to take that income and put it into something that's going to grow over the years to generate passive income. Passive income just doesn't fall out of the sky and hit you on top of the head. You got to actually earn it at some point. Back to that example I told you about someone who, who, who you know, uh, writes music for musicians, musical artists. Right. Those people did work. They wrote music. That music was, was, was purchased from them, and they get a royalty for that, but they put work in. 
There is no, I don't want to do any work ever and I'm going to get passive income. That, that, that don't happen, guys. I, I, please drop me some comments and tell me at one po what point can I get passive income where I have done nothing to develop it, build it, anything. I just get it. There is no situation like that, right? Not, not for 99% of us, it's not. Yeah, maybe somebody uh, gets an inheritance where, where their parents or, or somebody leaves them money, right? Maybe. And then they already instantly wealthy because they already got a, you know, inheritance. That person probably didn't do any work for, for, for their passive income if they, they inherited money. But for people that are self-made and you got to go out and earn it the old fashioned way, you're going to put some work in. So, so the notion of, you know, I don't have to do anything to create passive income. Now, here's the thing. Passive income is what? Relative, right? I mean, passive income can be $3 a month in passive income, or it could be $300,000 a month in passive income. It's all relative. It's all what I perceive as passive income and how much passive income I need to pay for my lifestyle. When I talk to people about passive income, I'm talking to people about how to get yourself free so you're not working for somebody for the rest of your life. I'm not talking about, oh, yeah, you're going to earn $50 a month in passive income. That's passive income. Technically, that's passive income, but $50 a month is not going to be enough to satisfy your lifestyle. So why shoot for that? So when people come to me and say, hey, what dividend stocks, you know, should I be investing in? First thing I ask them is, is well, how much money do you have to invest? Oh, I'm just going to be putting in $500 a month, but I want some dividends. Guys, that $500 a month you're putting in to a company that pays dividends is not going to move the needle at all, guys. Those are going to be pennies. I mean, you got to have $500,000, right? You got to have $250,000 in that dividend investment in order for it to really yield anything that's meaningful, that'll pay for anything. And I always tell people, really, dividend paying ETFs, dividend paying stocks, in my opinion, or for someone that already has built wealth and now they're trying to figure out how to get income from that wealth. Then I want to go out and look for dividend paying stocks or dividend paying ETFs. But if I'm in the building stage of wealth and I've not built any wealth, I should be looking for growth stocks, not value stocks paying dividends, in my opinion. Now, that's just my opinion. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not trying to tell you what to do with your money. I'm just telling you, understand what you're doing. That's one of the biggest things people don't. They don't understand what they're doing. They just heard somebody on YouTube or they heard some, somebody on uh, Instagram or TikTok talking about dividend stocks. Listen, man, dividend stocks, in my opinion, are for someone who already has built wealth and they're trying to get income for that, for that, from that wealth. But if you're trying to build wealth, you have no wealth. I'm not sure why you would go because a dividend stock is typically, typically, now not a hundred percent absolute, guys, but typically a dividend stock is from a more mature company that's already had its growth. It's not fin to double in value in the next five years anymore. It's already there. It's already made its growth run, and it's now just a mature company. Yes, may be profitable, may be a great company, but it's not finna double its growth. So therefore, if I put my money into AT&T, let's use that as an example. Let's say I wanted to put my money into AT&T in order to grow my wealth. I got $1,000 a month. AT&T stock is, let's say, $25 a share. The only way my $1,000 a month really is going to multiply itself and grow is, is AT&T stock has to continue to go up. AT&T stock has to split and then continue to go up. AT&T is a, the, the largest telecommunications company in the world, but their stock is not going to double anytime soon, guys. It's already had its growth. It's already a behemoth. So you putting $1,000 in there thinking you're going to get a lot of growth, you're not going to get any growth. You'll get a little bit of a dividend because they have a super great dividend. But that little bit of dividend they give you on a thousand bucks ain't going to move the needle. It's going to be pennies on the dollar. Now, if I got a million bucks that I've already built up 
and I'm looking for a five, six percent rate of return on that million bucks. And I go to a company like AT&T who does pay a, a dividend yield, a yearly yield of, I don't know, in that five to seven percent range. Now I put my money in AT&T because I'm trying to get that five to seven percent yield on my million dollars that I already created. Now I can make 50 to 70 thousand dollars per year in dividends, passive income. So that's the difference between, you know, you investing in a growth company. I think you invest in growth companies when you're trying to build your wealth because you want to grow right along with their growth. Right. But if you already are in the enjoyment stage of wealth and you've already built your wealth and you're trying to get income from that wealth, then that's when you go find companies like AT&T and others like that that pay a great dividend, although they may not provide any growth to your investment. They will pay you income to hold your investment or your money in their stock. Just know the difference. Because I get it all the time. Hey, man, give me give me five dividend stocks to grow my wealth. Ain't no. Listen, man, unless you already got wealth, it, 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 it doesn't do you any good putting your money into a dividend stock, in my opinion. And again, guys, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just giving you based on my experience. The only way I grew my wealth in the stock market over the last 20 years was not by investing in dividend stocks, but investing in growing companies through like the S&P 500. Because see, in the S&P 500, you're going to have growth companies in there and you're going to have mature companies, what they call value companies. You're going to have both. Right? You're going to have both. But a lot of times, the S&P 500 is going to be heavily more weighted to what? Your growth companies, because that's what grows the S&P 500. Or I look for companies like Tesla. Right. Because Tesla doesn't pay a dividend. They're a growth company. They take all of their profits and they reinvest it back into growth. That's the kind of company I want to be in if I'm trying to build my wealth over the next 10, 15, 20 years. Right. I don't care about they don't pay a dividend. I don't have no enough money to make any money with dividends right now. I need to make some money. I need to multiply my money and get to a point where I have enough money that dividends make sense, right? I build my wealth first and then I turn on that investment to generate income when I'm in the enjoyment stage of wealth. When I'm in a building stage of wealth, I want to attach my money or put my money in companies that are rapidly growing because I want that investment to grow over the next 20 years. I don't really care about the dividend now, right? I don't care about the dividend because it ain't enough to take care of me. So, so please understand, dividend is great. It sounds sexy. It's a great little word, but... It means nothing if you ain't got wealth. It means nothing. It's pennies. Pennies won't take care of you. So if I got $1,000 a month to invest, I personally would not put my $1,000 in a dividend stock. I wouldn't. I'd put it in something that's a growth stock. Or I'd, I'd do a, you know, maybe 60-40 a 60, split where I got 60% in growth stocks and maybe 40% in value stocks getting a little bit of a dividend. But again, that dividend ain't going to be crap, man. It's not going to be nothing. Trust me, nothing. Nothing. I had over, shoot, I had over $340,000 in VGT. And VGT paid a dividend. And I was basically getting about $600 a quarter in dividend interest or dividend income on $340,000 I had in one of my investments. A nothing burger. It was a nothing burger, but I wasn't in VGT to get the $500 or $600 a quarter in dividends. I was in VGT because I knew if I could buy it at $300 a share, at some point I could sell it at $420 a share. That's why I bought VGT, not for the dividends. I bought it for the growth. And guess what I did over three years? I got that growth I was looking for. I bought it at 317 and I sold it around 320. I'm sorry, 420. I bought it at 317 and I sold it at 420. I made over $100 per share. That's how you build wealth. That's how you grow your wealth, right? Now, I could take that $340,000 if that's what I really wanted to do. 
one of my investments, I can take it, and guess what? I can go out to a place like AT&T now and get me a 5% yield, 6% yield, 7% yield on that $340,000. That's meaningful income, right? $25,000, $30,000 a year in income. That's where you get the income from. But you got to build the wealth first before you can go find income, guys. You build the wealth first. Then you go find companies or ETFs to put that wealth in in order to get good dividends to take care of yourself. Same thing with real estate. You don't buy a piece of real estate. Like I said, if you buy a piece of real estate cash, good for you. That means you develop the level of wealth. See, that's wealth. When I can go go to my bank account, pull $500,000 out and pay for a property cash. That's wealth, guys. Then I can, I can get a really nice cash flow. I can get a really nice net return to myself. But if I got to go buy that $500,000 property and I got to go to the bank to get a loan for $400,000 and I'm going to put 20% in, which is $100,000, guess what? That $400,000 loan that I got to pay to the bank going to suck up all that cash flow. It is, right? So I got to do multiple properties over time. The goal is when you're buying real estate where you really tr truly feel the full impact of the cash flow is when you own the property free and clear with no mortgage. That's when you get the full impact of the cash flow. But if you, if, but if you got a loan on the property, and I'm just talking about onesies and twosies, one to four family dwellings, guys. I'm not talking about somebody that got a 100-unit apartment complex with a loan on it. That's a whole different animal. That, that's a commercial loan. That's, even though it's multifamily, it's considered commercial. It's a different animal. I'm talking about one to four family dwellings for individual investors like you and I who don't have the type of money to go buy a 100-unit apartment complex. Everybody can't do that. Like 1% of the population can do that, guys. Most of us can go buy a single family home. Most of us can buy a duplex or, or a threeplex or a fourplex, rent it out and, and start building our portfolio to make money. But unless you own that one to four family outright and you got market rents coming in and your expenses are managed properly, you're not gonna make a whole bunch of money. Like I told you, in order to get yourself $5,000 a month and rental, $5,000 a month in net cash flow. You need at least a million dollar property owned free and clear, getting a 6% rate of return on it. What you can do, you can get a 6% rate of return. That'll pay you $5,000 uh, per month, $60,000 a year. But you got to own the property free and clear. See, that's where a level of wealth comes in. I can't go out here and say, well, okay, uh, I, I'm going to buy that million dollar property, but I'm going to get a $800,000 loan on it. And I'm going to get 60000 a year in cash flow. Normally, that's not going to happen unless it's like a beachfront property or, or, or something like that. But a normal, regular, schmegular property in a normal neighborhood with no beach, no, uh, none of that stuff around it, just a regular, and you pay a million, and you got to get, get a loan for 800000 you put two hundred in, you, you typically ain't going to get no $60,000 a year in net, net cash flow. You might make $60,000 a year in gross rents, but when you minus out your expenses, including your mortgage expense, uh -uh. you're not going to have no sick. You ain't going to get no, uh-uh. You might get half of that. You might clear $2,500 per month, maybe $30,000 a year. But 50% of that is going to mortgage expense and, 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 ex and, and general expenses for that property. So the key to passive income is building assets that you own outright, whether it be the portfolio from the stock market, whether it be real estate that you own outright, that's the key. It's building the wealth first, and then after you build the wealth, you turn around and find a vehicle that will pay you at least a 6% rate of return on that wealth. That's true passive income, that's true financial freedom, right? But you need to build the wealth first. So, so if you got $1,000 a month, you got $500 a month, you got $250 a month, you got $100 a month, whatever it is, two, $2,000 a month, build your wealth. Put it in something that will actually build wealth for you. And the stock market will do that. Real estate will do that too. But don't worry about the income at that point because ain't no income coming. The income comes once you, 
fully build out the investment. That's when you get the income. You got to fully build out the investment first, right? And then the income will be there. That's what I had to do. I had to do that over the last 20 years. I bought real estate. I didn't make any cash flow with my real estate, guys. But I didn't need to. I bought real estate in great locations so that I could build up the equity in the real estate over the last 20 years. So when I got ready to sell the real estate, that's where my net worth was. I didn't care anything about the cash flow because I knew at the level of real estate investing I was investing at, there was, no, there was not going to be sufficient cash flow. Why? Because every property I bought, I had to go get a loan. And I keep telling y'all, the loan is where you're going to get sucked dry. The bank ain't dumb. I mean, they're going to suck you dry on these properties with the interest rate. But I didn't care about that. All I cared about when I was building income and, and net worth through real estate, all I cared about was, does the rental income cover all the expenses? I'm going to make the bulk of my net worth when I sell the properties 10, 15, 20 years from now. That's where I make my my real, 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 real money. And then I'm going to take that real, real money that I made. I'm going to pay my taxes on it. And then I'm going to take the rest of it and put it in something that I've already created wealth now that's going to generate income for me. And that's what I did. So I bought real estate for, for, for 20 plus years. And all the cash flow did was cover the expenses. All the rental income did was cover the expenses. But when I sold all that real estate, I realized a seven figure net worth. Didn't make any money during the 20 years, but I didn't lose any. I already had a, a primary income coming in. I already had side hustles. So I didn't need the rental income to live off of. I needed, what I needed real estate was to do is create net worth for me from nothing. And that's what it did. So you got to figure out when you're getting ready to buy assets if you're trying to build those assets at some point in the future to create passive income for you, you better decide, number one, how much passive income do I need? Matter of fact, let me give you three things you need to think about, right? First thing is your target date. You need to figure out at what point in the future do I want this income? So if I'm a, so if I'm a 25 year old person and by the time I'm 40, I wanna be able to have enough passive income coming in to take care of me. So your target date it's 15 years because you're 25 now, you want to be free at 40. So 15 years is your target date. Your target amount is going to be how much income from a passive standpoint do you need when you get to 40. Let's say you need $10,000 when you get to 40, right? So your target date is 15 years. Your target amount is 10 grand per month when you get to 40 years old. That's what you want your investments to be able to produce for you without you doing anything. Then the last piece of that puzzle is your target net worth, AKA the assets. The assets are what generate the passive income. So my target date is 15 years. My target amount is 10,000. And then my target net worth or my AKA assets needs to be what? Two million bucks, right? I need, to, I need to get $2 million in assets, whether that be real estate that I own outright, whether that be a, a healthy stock market portfolio or a combination of the two. And how did I get to the two million buck number? How, how do I know it's two million? Use the rule of 200, like I told you earlier. Take the $10,000 times it by 200, that's $2 million. The rule of 200 says, hey, if you want to generate uh, $10,000 a month in, 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 in passive income, you need to build your assets to $2 million. And again, what are, what are, what, what's the rule? You take the $2 million, you find a 6% rate of return, right? $2 million times 6% is what? $120,000 a year. You divide that by 12. That's $10,000 per month. So now I have the three key ingredients that I need to have in order to start my wealth building process. Without those three pieces of information, guys, you're fooling yourself. You can't put a plan together unless you know where you wanna end up. At least not a financial plan, you can't. You better have some idea where you wanna end up and at what time. 
And then you need to figure out how many, how much do you need to build those assets to, to make all of it happen. Those are the three pieces of information you need to have when you start putting a plan in place in order to get yourself to a point where your passive income from your assets will be enough to take care of you. But if you're just right here saying, I, I don't know any of that stuff, but I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just going to go out here and start investing. First time you hit a bump in the road, you're going to quit. Why? Because you have no, no real tangible reason for doing it. You're just doing it because everybody else is doing it. You better go out and find you a tangible reason for why you're going to go through a lot of financial hell. Because you're going to go through some financial hell to get there. It's not going to be easy, but it'll be worth it if you have a reason to do it. I had a reason to do it. And you guys know I've, I've, I've mentioned this many a times. My family was my reason. And the next reason I had is well, I didn't want to work for somebody for the rest of my life. I wanted to have a, a period of my life, a good period of my life, where I could just sit back and do whatever I want to do and, and just not worry about money. Those were my two reasons. My family, I didn't want to let them down. And then me, I didn't want to let me down. So I had two tangible, hardcore reasons to go through financial hell in order to get to that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Because you're going to go through hell. You're going to go through adversity, right? And if you don't have something that's more important to you than your fear, backing you up, motivating you, you're going to quit. That's why 100 million Americans, adult Americans, don't have no money in retirement savings because they didn't have a compelling reason to, to, to save for anything. They didn't sit down and do this exercise that I'm asking you to do when you're thinking about building up your assets to generate passive income. Again, I don't care what you hear on the internet. Ah, you don't need, blah, 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 blah. listen, man, you're going to need, you're going to need some money. You're going to need income. You're going to need income. I, 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 you, there ain't no way to create passive income without income. Like I said, you can trade time for money for something you did years ago. And I gave you a couple examples of that. Yes, you can get it from, I, I, you know, if, if I serve in the military, like I said earlier, if I served in the military and I did 20 years and I get a pension for that, guess what? That's an asset. That pension is an asset. Because what? Work I did 20 years ago. But I guarantee you I'm not going to get a military pension if I didn't serve in the military long enough. They're not going to give it to me. If I, if I never served in the military but I think I'm going to get a military, no. Same with Social Security. You don't get Social Security, guys, unless you put something into the Social Security piggy bank during your working years. Yeah, when Uncle Sam get that, get, get those tax, that, that FICA tax that you pay, part of that is going into that Social Security piggy bank. That's why you're able to get a Social Security pension at some point when you retire. Hopefully it'll be there when you retire. But they don't give you that just because, oh, we're nice. We, no, they give it to you if you put money in. If you didn't put any money in, you don't get nothing. The more you put in, the more you get. The less you put in, the less you get. But that's from work you did in the past. So yes, that's still considered an asset, but I'm talking about your big three assets where you have to physically take your earned income, your active income, and invest it in something, and over time, build those assets to a point where they create passive income. That is the hard part. It ain't easy, that's the hard part. So please just, just get your thought process right. That's great that you got $500 to invest each month. But this, this notion of I'm going to take the $500 and put it in dividend stocks and I'm going to build my wealth to $3 million. No, that ain't going to happen. Not in my opinion, not in dividend stocks, it's not. Mm -mm. You better find you some growth, some growth companies mixed in with those dividend stocks you might have a chance. And then again, $500 ain't going to do it unless you do it for the next 100 years. Next 40 years it might do it. But if you want to get there in the next 10, 15, 20 years, you're going to need more than $500 a month. You're going to need more than $500 a month. So the goal should be, okay, let me earn, let me, let me streamline my expenses, let me live on less than what I make, let me live on a, a plan, a personal budget, let me stay out of consumer debt, and let me save and invest as much as I can. I was having a conversation with, with a young gentleman yesterday. He and I was talking about his, 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 his saving and investing strategy. And he was telling me, hey man, I'm taking home about I'm taking home about $5,000 a month. And, you know, I'm probably living on about half of that. And I said, so what you doing with the rest of it? 
well, some of it I'm putting in the 401k, da, 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 da. I said, listen, man, here's the deal. If you want to get the freedom, your goal should be living on 50% of what you make and then putting 50% in investments to build wealth for you. That should be the goal. I'm not saying everybody will hit that goal, but that should be the goal. I live on 50% of my net income and I take the rest of it I invest aggressively for the next 10 to 15 years and then I'm free. I'm free. And in his case, that would have been about 20. I told him if he could get to about $3,000, $3,000 per month, if he can get himself to $3,000 per month in an S&P 500 ETF with an average rate of return of 8% over the next 10 years, he'd be knocking on a million dollar investment portfolio in 10 years. That's what he'd be almost there with. And guess what? I mean, he was, what is he? he I think he's 30, I think he said he was 32. So by 42, he'd be a millionaire. But got some financial pain though, because you got to put $3,000 a month away every month for 10 years and get at least an 8% rate of return. If he was willing to do that, he, he had freedom. Or at least he has more choices, more time, right? And more freedom in his life. So that's the key, man. The key is looking at your income and decide how much of that income you want to dedicate it to making other people wealthy or how much you want to dedicate it to making you wealthy. That's, the, that's, the, that's it right there in a nutshell, right? The goal is live on 50% of what you make. Put the other 50% in investments and get the freedom. Or you can live on 50% of what you make and then take 50% and make somebody else wealthy and you never get the freedom. And then you're sitting around here my age looking crazy, looking really, really, really stressed financially. Why? Because you didn't take care of what you needed to take care of. I keep telling y'all nobody going to give you nothing in this world. Nobody. They ain't going to give you nothing. None of these people you follow on social media, all these big time celebrities, big time athletes, big time politicians, all of us fighting with each other about what this politician said, that politician said, man, them people rich, man. What y'all fighting over these people for? They rich. They riding on, they, they, they flying private jets. They, they, they going on vacation on big yachts, right? You, you send your little five, 10, $15 in donation to them and guess what they're doing? They're using that money, living lavish lifestyles. But see, that's what we do in this country. We, we more concerned about somebody else than we concerned about our own self. I'm more concerned about what somebody else says than I'm concerned about what I think and, and, and how I'm going to make a difference. We too concerned about other people in this country. And we got to get to a point where we get out of that and start being more concerned about us and our family and our financial well-being. We're more concerned about somebody else's damn well-being. Get concerned about our well-being. Stop worrying about these politicians. Stop worrying about these celebrities. Stop fighting their battles. Everybody want to pick a side. Stop doing all of that. But yet and still, you hit any bump in the road, any financial bump in the road you hit, you ain't got enough money in your savings account to cover you for two months. You're done. But yet and still, though, we'll get on social media and we'll have an argument with people about stuff that don't even matter. Do you really think any of these politicians care anything about you guys? But yet and still, that's all we want to talk about. We, we'll, we, will, we will fall out with lifelong friends because of disagreements over politics when none of them jokers, y'all protecting, care anything about you. They don't care one thing about you. And same with all these celebrities. These people don't care one thing about you other than you spending your money to make them more wealthy. I'm telling you guys, we got to reprioritize and focus on the right things. That's a big problem in this country. We focus on all the wrong things. I don't give a rats, you know what, who in the White House. I don't really care, right? Because guess what? Whoever in there, I guarantee you, they're not going to make a personal visit to my house, sit down with me and say, well, Richard, thanks for uh, getting me in. Uh, what can I help you with? Ain't no, none of them going to do that. None of them. So do I care who in there? No, I really don't. Because again, all of them are going to be subject to who? The 1%. Big corporate. I don't care who get in there, guys. They, 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 they got people who put them there. 
And they can't turn it back on these powerful people with all this money, man. They can't. So your little agenda, what you think, <laughs> they don't care about your agenda. All they care about is, is, the, is, is the lobbyists and the power players that put them in that, that seat. So do what you want to do. It's coming up. You got a year, right? It's coming in a year. I don't care who you put in there. Doesn't, doesn't affect my life. Because guess what? I'm going to be out here balling out of control when it comes to building my wealth. I don't care who in the White House when I have my wealth. Because I know the 1% going to protect me. Why? Because that's where the 1% got their wealth. Exactly where I'm going to have my wealth. So the 1% ain't going to let none of them guys do anything they ain't got no business doing. To jeopardize their wealth. So, so if I'm smart, I build my wealth and I put it where the 1% put their wealth. That way it's protected. I ain't got to worry about who in the White House. The only people who worry about who in the White House are people who are afraid of what's going to happen to them. See, I'm not afraid of what's going to happen to me because I know I have assets. I know I have financial power to be able to sustain any whatever happens. The only way anything happens to my financial situation is if the United States as a whole collapses, which I don't believe that's going to happen. Right. And if it does, it does. I control what I can control, guys. I don't spend my time worried about what I can't control. And I keep telling y'all that. Stop worrying about stuff you can't control. F refocus yourself on building wealth. Refocus yourself on your family. Refocus yourself on your health. Things that truly matter. The rest of this crap going on in the world do not matter. I'm telling you, don't spend your life uh, uh, worrying about other people. Secure your financial situation in this life and really go out and find some happiness. Now, again, money's not going to make you happy, but it sure gives you the option to have more choices, more time and more freedom in your life. That can make you happy. See the difference, right? Can make you happy. But if you're sitting around here worrying about the wrong things, donating all your money to people who don't care nothing about you, buying crap that you don't need, good luck to you. Passive income is not guaranteed to you. You're going to have to build assets to get it. That's the truth about passive income. And I've told you how to get it. It's up to you to go out now and work your financial plan to get it. But you can. You got to be realistic, though. Right. You got to set some goals that are that are realistic, that are measurable and that are actionable. Those are the things you got to do, right? Realistic, measurable, and actionable. Those are the financial goals you need to be setting for yourself. And like I said, I got a company called RL Financial Consulting. And in that company, I do one hour, one hour financial sessions where I strategize with individuals on their financial situation. We put a plan together and then they have to follow it. It's not a mentoring where I sit around here for three weeks and mentor you. That's not what it is. That's what too much of us want. We want somebody else to be responsible for our financial freedom. Oh, I need a mentor for, the, for, for six weeks. No, you don't. No, you don't. You need somebody to help you come up with a plan, and then you are responsible for going out executing that plan. You don't need a lifelong mentor. Now, don't get me wrong. If there are people in your gang of five out there, that you like to lean on for inspiration, that's one thing. But you can't hold them accountable for your success. And that's what I see a lot of people trying to do with mentors. Well, uh, uh, ABC told me to do this. No, it's your decision at the end of the day, not ABC, it's your decision. So don't, 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 don't put your financial freedom responsibilities on some other person to do everything for you. No, it's nothing wrong with sitting down with somebody and putting a plan together and then checking in with that person from time to time and say, hey, look at my progress. I'm balling. I'm doing what I need to do. Oh, hey, I hit a bump in the road here, but here's how I pivoted. That's different because you're responsible for doing this. But you can't go to someone, at least not in my opinion, you can if you want to and if they allow it. But most people who are successful in this world are not going to allow that. Right. No one who's successful in this world going to allow you to just monopolize their time and you don't do anything on your own. Come on, guys. That's not even realistic. So in my in my one hour sessions, we come up with solutions. We don't talk about problems. We only talk about solutions. 
And then those solutions we talk about, you have to then take those solutions and go out in this real world and build your wealth. That's it. And I've done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these over the last three and a half years. I really have. So all you got to do if you're interested in that, there's a email address down in the description box of this video for RF Financial Consultant. All you got to do is send me an email and then I'm going to send you some information kind of outlining sort of what I do and what the fee structure is. And then you go from there. And again, guys, it, it, it's, it's an investment in you, not in me. Right. So, so if you feel like the fee is, is, is way above what you're willing to pay, that's not a problem. You just go out and do it on your own or find somebody else cheaper. That's all. I know what my value is. I ain't budging. There ain't no, ain't no negotiations. Mm -mm. It's not a negotiation. It's what I charge and it's what I believe one hour of my time one on one is worth. So if you want to go down that path, send me the email. And like I said, I'll send you some information to let you know exactly what the deal is. And then you make your decision. If you decide to move some other direction, it's not a big deal. I'm, I'm already at freedom. I'll be OK. Like I said, I've done hundreds and hundreds of these things, so I'm in good shape. I'm just out here trying to help people. But I also know people got to have skin in the game in order for them to really take it seriously. If I charged a nothing, then they wouldn't take it seriously. And then I'd just be wasting my time. Right. So that's a way not to waste my time. That's a way to get people skin in the game so they don't waste their time. Well, I'm going to wrap it up, guys. I, I'm, I'm, I'm so happy you stopped by. You tapped in. And like I said, if, 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 if you're tapping in, please hit that thumbs up for me right now. I know we got quite a few people here in the live. Guys, before you tap out of this live, do me a big favor. Hit the like button. It's really important because that will let YouTube know that, hey, this is something that they should try to push out to more people who are not already a part of our community. The more people we can get a part of this community, that means the more people we can help get the financial freedom. And obviously this channel is all about getting people to financial freedom. So please hit that thumbs up button for me. Smash it a thousand times. The next thing I want you to do for me is share this video. Share it with people in your sphere, in your network, in your family, right? Share it. Don't, don't make the decision if it's something that may help them or not. All you got to do is share it and say, hey, take, take some time out, take a look at this video. Because again, the goal here is we want to help each other. We want to connect and help people get to their freedom along with us. That's really the ultimate goal. Get as many people as we can to freedom, right? That's the goal. So please share. If you don't mind, that would be really, really greatly, greatly, greatly appreciated. If you want up to 12 free stocks from Weeble, guys, you got to click on that link down in the description box. Open up that Weeble account today. Go get up to 12 free stocks for just trying out the brokerage app. You can put any amount of money in the brokerage account. Now, obviously, if you're serious about building wealth and using the Weeble app to do it, you want to put more money in. You want to put enough money in there so you can start trading immediately. Because once you open the account, and if you're not familiar with how to use the Weeble app, you can always DM me on Instagram at richardfain 28 I will send you a free Weeble tutorial video for you to take a look at. And that tutorial video is, is basic, guys. But it's going to give you the, the, the nuts and bolts that you need in order to effectively make your first trade, whether it be an ETF or individual stock. Right? So if you want that free tutorial video, Open up the account, fund it, send me an email over at, I'm sorry, send me a DM over at Instagram, Richard Fain 28. That's Richard Fain 28. Just send me a DM and I'll send you out that. Well, all right, guys, I'm going to sign on off. I'm getting ready to, in a couple hours, uh, watch my good friend, Coach Prime, and the CU Buffs take on Oregon. Both teams are 3-0. and they're playing in Eugene, Oregon at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. It's going to be fantastic, and I can't wait to see what the Buffs do. I'm rooting for the Buffs, and I hope they pull it out. They go to 4-0, and and guess what? September 30th, guess where your boy going to be? I'm going to be right there in Boulder, Colorado, watching the CU Buffs take on the 
USC Trojans. Woo-hoo-hoo. And y'all know, if them buffs be 4-0, oh, going into that USC Trojans game in Boulder next weekend, oh, my goodness, man. That thing going to be standing. And y'all know I'm going to live stream right from the game. I'm a live stream right here on YouTube, right from the game on the sideline with Coach Prime. That's right. So stay tuned, guys. Stick around this channel. Stick around for more exciting financial information coming. I, I upload every day. I do live streams pretty much every day. So tap in, stay tapped in, and let's, let's go ahead and change some lives, man. Let's change some lives. Thoughts become things. You can see it in your mind. You can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. And I'm going to catch you on the next live, on the next video. Peace.